This is our session on local supplier development. Uh, I feel I don't really have to do an introduction because STP and suppliers have been talked about all morning and that's fantastic. That's exactly what we want to hear. Uh, so we're going to hear from Gillian Cameron, Programme Manager uh, for the Supplier Development Programme, who's also asked along Kenny Govan from SBT to talk more on the, the, uh, the aspects of supplier development from, from their side. Uh, as mentioned earlier, Gillian joins us fresh, fresh from yesterday's hugely successful annual Meet the Buyer event. Uh, and Gillian clearly needs very little introduction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand over to Gillian, who's going to cover her presentation with Kenny. Gillian. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you for the introduction. I'm just going to load up my presentation here. OK, well, good afternoon um, and welcome to the session. I'm uh, talking a bit about community wealth building and how Supplier Development Poma have been working with our various members around doing that. So one of the key things that um, the Spire Development Programme do is we're working um, under the auspices of the Scottish Government National Performance Framework. And very much it is about how we contribute to the power of procurement and the sustainable procurement duty. Um, so it's really um, important for us to make sure we are aligned with the, the National Performance Framework and how we do that and how we support the members. Um, I'm sure you're all aware that all 32 local authorities are members of us and um, we're delighted about that factor. Um, but we also have a number of other public bodies that are members of SDP. Um, and you can see from this slide the logos that are on here. Plus, we have three corporate members now um, with Robertson's Facilities Management being the latest organisation to join us. And that's really important. It's another dynamic about how we work with them and um, to engage the local supply base. So, to, so it's very important to us. So I think the first step of how we feel that we influence um, community wealth building is around early intervention. Um, I'm sure you're more than well aware of that the fact that we provide training support on all aspects of public sector tendering. Um, and the reasons that we do that is obviously to improve the readiness of local suppliers. Um, but also it's critical to our role, I think, is raising the awareness of local opportunities um, to understand um, what is coming up. Um, early engagement and early awareness for suppliers is hugely important. Um, and it's really important for us to, to connect, connecting the suppliers with the buyers. And we do that through a range of key events, um, hosting webinars. Um, I'm hoping that many of you were part of our Meet the Buyer event yesterday, um, which we had over a thousand delegates at. Um, we had 27 out of the 32 local authorities, plus a number of other public bodies. And those are important events to have that early awareness and engagement for the suppliers and um, to meet with the buyers. Other aspects include like um, the major infrastructure projects and um, obviously we're heavily involved in those. Um, and so it's important for us to make sure that we're there early on in the process. And I'll talk a wee bit more about that later. Um, what we want to do is make sure that we're promoting links and connecting with other government business support services as well. So obviously we work the likes of Business Gateway, Skills Development Scotland and some of the other organisations that are out there. So for us, it's a holistic approach to make sure we're having a good form of supplier engagement. I just thought I'd highlight some of the outcomes here. Um, last year when we created this figure, it was sitting at 88%. So I'm delighted to say that it's gone up to 93% of Scottish SMEs said that they were more likely to bid for public sector contracts after attending STP training. And I think at the heart of it, of what STP does, is to give that skill to Scottish businesses, third sector and the supported businesses, the ability to then work with the public sector and use those skills to grow uh, their business and to grow the work that they might deliver in the local community and thus help support community wealth building. Uh, I mentioned earlier about some of the um, infrastructure projects. Um, we are involved in all the projects you see up on the screen here. Um, some are obviously at a more mature stage, such as Glasgow City Region. In fact, yesterday um, we worked with them at our Meet the Buyer event where they launched their new contract pipeline, which is highlighting the various different frameworks that they use um, for the up and coming projects. Um, I think it's a really important piece of information. It's a piece of work that we've worked on quite closely with the project team at Glasgow. 
Um, because often a contract may not be a new contract, it may be let as a framework contract. And the question for suppliers is, well, what framework is it? Where is the opportunity for me to get involved? How do I find out about it? Um, so Glasgow pulled together a spreadsheet that literally has more detailed information on there so suppliers can understand that they're using perhaps a Scotland Excel framework, using Glasgow's own or one of the other ones out there. Um, and this is something that we're very keen as part of the work that STP does is to champion um, using um, good practice and taking that forward. Um, recently, the, the CLES did a report regarding uh, construction within uh, the growth deal and they highlighted the importance of the supplier development programme being utilised to help inform suppliers and local businesses about the opportunities um, and engaging the tier one contractors as well as a conduit for small businesses to get into the contracts. Because obviously these infrastructure projects, many of them will be very large scale. And so it wouldn't be that the suppliers would be bidding straight to them, but it's how they get in the supply chain. And that is another way to ensure that the suppliers are growing um, their ability to grow their business, in fact, um, as part of the economic recovery. So some of these ones are in very early stages. We do have, um, at the end of this month, um, we have an event for Stirling Clack Manager City Growth Deal. Um, that's happening this month. And they're the very early stages of highlighting what the growth deal is about. Um, starting to engage the local business base and the wider regional base and understanding the opportunities that are involved in that. So I think that's a really positive step to start at the beginning and say, OK, here are the opportunities that are going to be coming up. And many of the contracts won't be let or for a very long time, but it's a, a process to ensure that we can work together with the councils to try and get the businesses tender ready. So they understand the processes they're going to be involved in. Um, and it really is key about working together and the early engagement. So some of the work that we've been doing um, around the kind of community wealth building is about how we contribute to the procurement strategies. So how can we influence at the beginning um, some of the good practice that we've been delivering, working with other council areas, other growth deals, and ensuring that's put into the action plans. And um, we've contributed to various different councils, community wealth building action plans, more than happy to talk about that if anyone wants to approach us directly. And um, if you're looking to um, update your plans or indeed create a plan, and um, we have some experience of what we've been doing with some of the other councils. And I think that's one of the beauties of STP. We sit at the heart of this and um, we have all 32 local authorities as members. So we want to take what's best practice. We want to utilise the experience we've got and the input we've had from the councils and share that out. Um, instead of recreating the wheel, um, hopefully we're, we're helping share that information and share the best practice around it. Very keen that the use of STB is embedded with those plans. Um, so we have that collaborative approach to supplier support and engagement, and it also gives that continuity as well. So suppliers understand how they can get involved. And raising early awareness, um, we spent a, a huge amount of time and effort in the last year, really building up our social media channels. I'm delighted to say that every one of the councils all follow us. And obviously with COVID, this has really been very important about how you engage with suppliers, how you inform them of up and coming opportunities and what is coming next and to get them tender ready. Um, we're very happy to discuss with you what uh, plans you might have and what contracts you might have coming up and how you maybe want to start that early engagement, starting to put out some messages um, for key groups, etc. So building early awareness, heads up. Um, these are some of the thoughts around um, how we can do that. Um, this is part of where I thought I could bring in my colleague, Kenny Govan, to maybe talk around some of the things that they've been doing and how he sees how this can help uh, the buyers. No, I'm just hiding in the background, Jillian. You just carry on. <laughs> um, Jillian's brought me in from a buyer perspective to, to, to go through this next couple of slides here. Um, everybody's got a annual procurement report, and in that annual procurement report, you've got a, well, most public sector organisations rather, have a two-year plan of tenders that are coming up. So you'll know what you've got coming, and you've know, you can then build in where you would think STP can actually help you with this. So 
you look at that and you look at tenders that are coming up that have got potential for local businesses to apply for it. So you know your own markets. Uh, and you also get the, the potential for, for SMEs to engage with those tenders. And especially ones who you've got tenders that are coming up where you've got low bidder capability. So uh, markets like education, transport, taxis, etc., potentially care companies where you know the, they don't bid for things all the time and they're not really that great at it. So you identify those. And then you go to you go to SDP, which is a organization who you'll pay for and hardly MD uses. They're the most underused resource that you've probably got. There's a few councils have caught and to this and a few public bodies like my own have caught and to this resource, but you know, you, you should make use of this because what they do is if you bring them in early, they'll then identify you know, your own economic development will be able to help you with this. They'll identify who your potential bidders are and then they'll train them. And they'll train them well in advance of your own tender. But they'll also do is not just train them on basic tendering capability. If you engage with SDP early enough, they will also train them about how to bid for your particular tender. And they've done this before. They've done this for early years provision for a number of councils, and they've done it for taxi contracts. I've seen them doing this myself. I've actually seen SDP sitting in a room with bidders, helping them to bid and talking them through how to use PCST. We can't do that as a buyer. You can't do that. It can't be in the same room as them because you can't influence it. But they can. So they're a huge resource that you've got there. So you should use them accordingly. Um, the only outcome you're going to get from that is more bids and improved bids and improved bids and improved competition. So, you know, what's not like? Pop on a slide, Jill, please. So how to help yourself, though, as well. So you bring in SDP, you bring them in early, you get these things in place, you engage with them early, you engage with your market early as you can. But your own documentation sometimes doesn't help either. So procurement doesn't need to be hard. I think most days know that. Uh, but we can make it hard and we can make it hard for bidders. Um, so horses for courses. So you can change your standing orders and some councils have done this. And they've mandated things like quick quote for under £50,000. Stops people doing it by email and things like that. Um, but then they've also put in much, much simplified documentation. Rather than going with, I've got this tender template, I'm just going to use this tender template, put in something that's simple, that's fit for purpose. Um, lotting. It's hard. I know it's hard. It's hard to lot things. It's difficult because uh, you're breaking things down. Most of the time you're making things harder for yourself, but you need to consider that. You need to consider trying to simplify your tenders and bring it down to make it far more accessible. But what you can also do is, that last wee bit there, embed your social environmental criteria. So if you have mandated in your standing orders that I will include all this in every tender, that's a one way of doing it. But you also need to put it in at a decent value. Don't put in like 1% of your tender evaluation is, is attributed to this because that doesn't incentivize them. Put in at a decent amount so that the people who are bidding know you're serious about it. Um, you also mandate that criteria. You don't just say, yeah, we'll do it in some or we'll maybe do it in this type of tender. You mandate it. Because there's ways of doing it, you can put it in for all if you need to do it. Pop on the slide, Jill. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were doing this one, though. Uh, yeah, so I was going to talk a bit about opening up the supply chain. Um, this is a piece of work that we've been doing with uh, a number of councils, including actually Scottish Fire and Rescue, is about how to ensure that your contractors are delivering that social investment, maximising their approach to community benefits. So making sure that that comes down the supply chain. Um, so you know, can you identify specific community benefits that can lead to community wealth building from those contracts? Um, can improved contract monitoring help with that? And one of the things that um, some of the organisations have been doing is encouraging the tier one contractors to become a corporate member of SDP so they can then utilise our services. Now, another benefit to yourselves as buyers around that is 
the reporting and the information we can feed back. And um, it's a structured approach, much like we're working with the councils, etc., on how we engage through our events, our webinars, etc. And we can provide then details of who attended. We can do supplier feedback surveys as well. And that's information that you can utilise in your reports and how that has been delivered. And the corporate can then utilise that to report back to the individual contract authority about what they have delivered and show those outcomes. Um, I think it's important to have visibility to subcontracting opportunities. Um, the more the better. And I think, Kenny, you could probably talk a bit about around how that could be implemented within the contracts. Yeah, you, you can, uh, it's possible to, as part of your um, your criteria that you're putting in for community benefits, for instance, is you can mandate the use of local contractors in that. A lot of people put it in and say, yeah, that's one of my options is, is to use a, as a local SME as part of my supply chain. You can actually mandate it. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, is to say that as part of your community benefit solution, you, your submission to me, that part of the points I'm going to allocate to this will be you using X amount of, obviously you can't dictate who it is, but local suppliers, local, and you can dictate what that local is within your supply chain. So you're actually pushing it towards it. You're not just giving them the free reign to bid the way they would want to bid. You're saying, no, this is what I want from you. So it's entirely possible to mandate it. You need to watch what you're doing, that there is a local contractor out there that can actually do it, and it's not going to cost you a fortune to do it. But, you know, you do the, the upfront legwork and, you know, if it's possible to do it, then you can mandate it. And if that's the way you want to go, then you should mandate it. OK, so just talking about some of the future events that we've got coming up um, for future supplier engagement. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we've got the Fourth Valley Meet the Buyer event and we've got several other Meet the Buyers. And new for this year is Meet the Buyer South, which is an event that we're going to be delivering with the South of Scotland Enterprise. Um, we've always aspired to do an event in the South um, and we've been working with the councils, with Scottish Borders Council and Defries and Gallaby um, as partners to develop that event um, and the date is in November. And we've got other ones that will be coming up in the calendar when the dates are confirmed. So, I'll just go back a slide. Um, I'm quite happy to think, I think I made my timing not bad, 21 minutes past. Stephen, I think we've kept to that quite well, so we're quite happy to take some discussion and some questions around this. Perfect. Thank you, Gillian. Uh, I've got a couple of questions. Uh, one of them is from Mark Allen, so I'm going to ask the guys to unmute Mark and ask his question in person. You just give us a second. Mark, are you ready? I think that's been unmuted now, I hope. Yep. Thank oh, sadly, you, sadly, you can hear me, Stephen. Thanks so much. Um, hi, Gillian. Hi, hi, Kenneth. I think it's a possible question for you both. I'm just wondering about um, the read across, if there is any between uh, development needs assessment and su local supplier development in particular. Should, do you think it's good practice or should we be doing, if we don't do it already, uh, some kind of development needs assessment of our local suppliers to try and assess what they think they need? in particular what they think the barriers are against them doing business locally or with public sector generally and not making assumptions about it. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's something that we do through the kind of uh, webinars that we host, the talking tenders, where you as a, a local authority can have that forum to invite suppliers in to ask questions through frequently asked and we can do supplier surveys as well. Um, one of the other ways that we do work with the buyers as well is to understand that the opportunities that are coming up, what's happened in the past. So when you've let a contract, has there been areas of weaknesses? Have you not been ha not had a, a large response? So how can we help engage with that response um, and try and uh, help and encourage more suppliers to bid for that by offering the support as a line tender training? Kenny, do you want to add to that? I think the, the, probably one of the the ways to do that is to, is to do it up front um, before you put the tender out in the first place. Mm -hmm. So um, you, you do your usual, you publish a prior information notice and then you get all interested parties in and um, you ask them lots of questions and you let them ask you lots of questions on you ask them what the barriers are and what you can do to help them. So you're outlining what your tender is 
you know, you chat about that, and then they'll say, right, okay, I've got difficulties because of X, Y, and Z. And then you try and address them before your tender goes out. But you need to be really far in advance to do that. You're talking six to, to nine months before your actually tender goes out. But with some tenders with some values, it's well worth doing. Sure, both that spot on. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. We have a question from Zoe Fans in South Asia. Uh, hi, Gillian. Can you remind us what STP is doing with third sector interfaces? Uh, it's in the plurality pillar of the community wealth building. Uh, it's so important that the procurement community thinks about this area. OK, um, we have done some work with the third sector interfaces. Um, I'm always keen to uh, engage more with them. I'm more than happy Zoe, to pick up a conversation about how we can work in your area and certainly with anyone else. Um, again, you know, how can we support them around that? Um, I'm aware there are uh, the P4P organisations out there that very much focuses on the third sector and we have worked with them together on raising awareness, etc. So more than happy to have a conversation around that. OK, guys, thank you very much. I think that's all the questions we have for you. So thank you very much, Gillian. Thanks, Kenny.